Welcome everyone. I am so happy that you're here today and that you're tuning into a conversation that I have been looking forward to sharing with you for months. French wedding planner extraordinaire Jennifer Fox is joining me, and I am so excited for you to get to know her. Jen and I first met on Instagram years ago and became fast friends. Since then, we have grown our businesses together and collaborated on countless weddings from Paris to the Loire Valley to the Côte d'Azur. Jennifer is the owner of Jennifer Fox Weddings, a full-service planning and design firm in France that specializes in luxury destination weddings and events. With an MBA in international hospitality and a sommelier diploma from Le Cordon Bleu, Jen has spent the past 10 years helping couples plan their dream destination weddings in France and is regularly featured in exclusive publications such as Martha Stewart Weddings, Style Me Pretty, and The Knot. Jen, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to The Wedding Destination. Hi, Molly. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to chat with you. I am so thrilled to have you here, Jen. You are someone who has such a unique story and vision, and you bring those two pieces together so beautifully in our work. And I'm really excited for listeners to get to know you. So before we start talking all things weddings, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started in the industry? Oh, sure. I'm happy to. And thank you very much for your lovely compliments. (laughs) So I actually started working in the wedding planning industry back in 2013. I was living and working in Paris for a small boutique wedding planning agency. And, you know, it, it just I fell in love with the industry. The bug bit me and it bit me hard. (laughs) I haven't looked back since. I basically work planning and designing weddings of two people all the way up to 200. No wedding is either too big or too small. And I just, at the heart of it, I just love making people happy and love producing one of the most important days of their lives. Oh, that's incredible. So I know you started 10 years ago in France. Can you tell us a little bit about what brought you to France, what your background was before you started in weddings? Of course. So I have a bit of a colored background as a lot of (laughs) creative people in our creative industry do. So before moving to France 13 years ago, I've been in the industry for 10, but I've lived in the country for 13. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey, and I was living in working in New York City prior to moving to France. So um, before being a wedding planning and wedding planner and designer, I was actually a professional singer and dancer. Um, I toured around North America and Canada with the Broadway musical Cats. So that was many, many, many lifetimes ago, but not my ninth life. Ha ha ha. (laughs) (laughs) But (laughs) so I worked as a professional dancer following that. I had, I, I, excuse me, I was the director of a, a luxury hair salon on Park Avenue, which really gave me the introduction to five-star guest services and working in that world that I had never known before. So I was very, very lucky to have the experience of working with the lovely clientele of the Upper East Side of New York City. (laughs) And I feel like that was a big help in getting my foot in the door in terms of standard quality of service standards. Wow, that's amazing. So, I mean, you have experience in entertainment. You have experience in luxury and hospitality and guest experience. And I know you also have an MBA in international hospitality and a sommelier diploma from the Cordon Bleu. So can you tell us a little bit about those two parts of your life? Yeah. So I was actually studying wine and sommelier when I was living in New York City at, I think they changed their, in the beginning, it was known as the French Culinary Institute, a very, very well-known cooking school in New York City that has since changed their name to, I think it's called the Culinary Institute of America. But if I'm completely wrong, I'm sure someone will call that out and I'm perfectly fine with being corrected. (laughs) So I was studying wine at the French Culinary Institute 
years before I decided to move to France. And what made me want to move is that I fell in love with French wine, basically. And I decided to make the switch from America to France just to explore the culture, to learn a new language, to get to know the people. So I had prior to moving here, I'd never spoke a word of French. I had never even been to Paris, let alone the country, but I was accepted into the program at Le Cordon Bleu and I just jumped over the pond with two feet in the water and I never looked back. That is amazing. So then you started working in weddings and events 10 years ago. When did you go out on your own and what was that like launching Jennifer Fox Weddings and starting to work in France? Yeah. So at first I had a different company name. My company name was Avec Weddings and Events. And I, I remember, that. yes. yes. <laughs> so I believe I kept that name for maybe three years, the first three years of my of my my starting out. But having prior experience working for a while with another wedding planning agency in Paris, it was a little bit scary, the idea of going out on my own, but I wasn't completely overwhelmed. I wasn't completely paralyzed with any anxiety or, or fear or anything like that, only because I got to meet a lot of people, a lot of vendors, a lot of venues along the way. And because of their support, it just added that extra push I needed to step out in the spotlight of my own. That's incredible. So when you started on your own, do you recall if you have had any specific weddings or events or even one turning point in your career that you feel like kind of took you from where you started to now you're really planning almost exclusively multi-day luxury events? So looking back, I don't, I know that some people have that one key event that really, you know, turned things around for them and really gave them the push that they needed. But I think that I have had a, a few small showstopper events, at least in my opinion, showstopper events that really helped to push that little extra bit. We did a beautiful wedding together, a beautiful elopement together in Santorini, because I, I do go outside of, of France sometimes. <laughs> uh, we did a beautiful uh, elopement in Santorini that really helped push my visibility, not only with um, international uh, an international luxury clientele, but also luxury vendors of a in a higher bracket. That helped. I did a beautiful styled shoot in Provence uh, in the Louveron. That really helped. I did quite a more contemporary, contemporary design wedding in Burgundy. That helped. So like I said, a little by little that accumulated into this big snowball to give a push down the mountain. That's amazing. And I think it's so fascinating hearing about your background because the fact that you have experience in entertainment, the arts, French wine, gastronomy, I mean, it all makes perfect sense that all of those passions and all of those experiences brought you to where you are today. And I think one thing that's really unique about you, Jen, is that Although you plan and design weddings all over France, working with couples that have wildly different background stories, styles, working in destinations and venues that are incredibly diverse and unique, but somehow every wedding that you plan still feels very special and very distinctive, yet it feels like you. So how do you approach the wedding planning and design process, given that every couple and venue you work in is so unique? Well, obviously, when planning each individual wedding, it's very, very important to me to focus on the needs and the aesthetic and all that goes into planning a wedding for each couple individually. 
However, at the heart of it, we all want to have an event that people want to go to, that people want to enjoy and have a wonderful time, no stress, just easy breezy, very approachable, myself included. So I really not only think about the couple and their guests, but (laughs) selfishly myself as well. (laughs) <laughs> because I mean, it's sh- like I said, it should be it should be comfortable and approachable for everyone on the day. And I really, really like to have that aspect when planning any type of an event, not only wedding, the wedding day, but also the welcome dinner, the farewell brunch, any type of event. So when a couple will reach out to you and decide to work with you and you start planning their wedding, How do you get to know them so that you are able to guide them in deciding on the best region in France, the best venue, and then from there hiring their vendors? Are they bringing in somebody internationally? Are they hiring somebody locally? What's that process like working with you? So it varies per couple. The the nitty-gritty varies per couple, but at the heart of it, I... Once I am contracted with my client, I'm talking to them on a regular basis, whether it's communicating via email or via Instagram or WhatsApp or whatever, because I take on such a small amount of events per year. I don't take anything over eight weddings per year, put maybe with two small elopements tagged on the end. But, and the reason is I really like to focus on each and every couple that I, that have contracted with me. I feel like it's only fair that they have 100% of my attention. So I don't miss any type of moment from the beginning of the planning process to the very, very end of the planning process. I am theirs. (laughs) So in terms of how I designate the design and the vendors and everything that goes into planning their day, it's very much dictated by them. From the very beginning, I ask them questions like, what are your top three wedding priorities? But also, what are the top three things that you don't want you or your guests to experience? What is your overall budget? What is your aesthetic in terms of flowers or uh, in terms of textures, colors, really things like uh, things of that nature? When it comes to bringing in vendors from outside of the country, that pretty much happens on a regular basis, depending on the vendor. For example, photography, a lot of times photographers will come from outside of the country. And that doesn't mean that I don't love working with the French photography community. Sometimes it's just because my clientele is, I would say, 90% American or Canadian, that language is a very, very integral piece of the puzzle, not only from the photography perspective, but also videography. And the reason why that is, is because on the day, the photographer and the videographer are like, they're with the couple throughout the entire day. So it's very important that not only can they communicate clearly without any hiccups, you know, wedding days can be very stressful and and fast moving, fast paced, but they should also be comfortable with that person's personality. If the, the culture, cultures are a little bit similar, that certainly helps. So that's where I, that's where the important lies in terms of client comfort on the day in relation to vendor choice. That makes so much sense. And you know, you're, yes, you are completely right. Being a photographer will reiterate how your photographer is with you on your wedding day more than you are with your spouse. So having that comfort, that 
level of connection communication is so important. And, you know, Jen, I think for you, one thing that really makes you unique and stand out is your creative vision and is your design process. You, you are a fantastic planner and a fantastic executor, but your design and intentionality that you put into each event is really extraordinary. And I think that that ties into every wedding that you do, regardless of the location and the couple. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you have honed your signature effortlessly elegant style? Yeah. Well, I truly believe that each wedding should tell a story from the very, very beginning until the very, very end. So I believe that the design process is just as important as the logistical planning. Yes, of course, everyone needs to get to your wedding on time and know where they're going and da, 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 da. But I mean, people get this feeling, your guests will get this feeling of what to expect from your wedding the moment they receive your save the date. And so being able to create that, that tactical memory and carry that throughout the design process is incredibly important to me. Mm. And I have to think as a designer and stylist, there is such a thin line that you want to toe with, you know, every event you want to still feel fresh and unique and true to the couple and true to the setting. But at the same, you also have your clients hiring you for your distinctive style and vision. How are you able to really maintain that where you're imbuing your Jennifer Fox signature look through all of your events, yet still continuing to find new, fresh, relevant perspectives? Well, I will say, having having been in the business for 10 years now, I'm very... In the beginning, it wasn't as, as I shouldn't, I don't want to use the word seamless, but it was a little bit more challenging in the beginning to really, to really hone my style and to really make it visible for clients to choose me because of that style. Now, now it's with, with Instagram having developed and all that, it's much easier so that when people come to me, they're they're coming to me not only for my planning services, but also in terms of having a wedding that looks like a Jennifer Fox wedding. So yes. it did take a little bit of time, like I said in the beginning, to really hone to really hone that and to make it very visible to people. But like I said, I like to I like to have a little bit of a mix of a truly traditional, French style meets California aesthetic that has some contemporary pops in it. Uh, it's very important to me. I know that people are coming to France to have a quote unquote French wedding. And I mean, it's, it's important to really represent the French culture and the customs and all of that. But also, I don't want them to completely lose any type of identity of their personal cultures, whether that be American or whether I'm doing a wedding in Provence for German clients like I did this past spring. It's very important to me that that's re represented through design and also cultures. That's amazing. And, you know, I can say that having seen many of your design boards before we work together on an event, the amount of intentionality and thought that you put into every single element of a wedding day before the wedding actually arrives is incredible. And from specifically from a photography perspective, I go into an event knowing that there are going to be so many photogenic moments. Somehow I think you really approach a day from a very multifaceted perspective. You think about what it's like for the guests and for the couple, how it's going to feel, but you also think about how is it going to photograph. And those are two very distinctive approaches that oftentimes don't always align unless done with a lot of 
thought and planning and intentionality. And even for you, I think your styling is something that really sets you apart and that you put a lot of your effort into. How have you gotten to where you are today with your styling? So I will say styling takes work and styling takes practice. (laughs) I remember in the very, very beginning when I started out the company, I spent hours upon hours just researching top wedding planners and how they styled their table and how they did flat lay designs and, and, and asking stationers if I could have like just a, a quote unquote practice set that maybe of stationery that they've used before just so I could practice at home with the small little styling props that I had just to, you know, not feel so much panic on the day when I had to focus on the styling or what have you. So again, it really does take practice if, if, there are any wedding planners or photographers or whomever may be listening, even brides, grooms alike, that that may be feeling a little bit intimidated that they're not good at, at styling, but it's something that's important to them to feature their stationery or to have a better looking head table or what have you. Grab anything that you can from your home and, and just just practice. That's all I can say. Practice makes perfect. Just practice. Oh, such good advice. And I mean, I know in addition to the elopement that we did together in Greece that you spoke about earlier, that was in Martha Stewart Weddings, which was a very pivotal moment for your career, also mine. We did a few styled shoots together. And I know when you were starting, you did a fair number of editorials and styled shoots. So I have to think for you that that really helped you hone your style, hone your process. And I have to think also was a really great way for you to start to develop a cohesive portfolio so that it would really allow you to connect with and book the type of couples that want the type of work that you are creating. Would you say that's correct? Yeah, I would absolutely say that's correct. I would also say that I was very, very lucky in terms of the photographers that I have worked with on certain style sh- style shoots who really helped me from a photography perspective. For example, I remember working with a photographer on a shoot that I set up a beautiful table for, for them to shoot. And they said, oh, Jen, just come over here, stand behind my lens. Do you see how if you move this table, uh, this excuse me, this candlestick a little bit to the right, it photographs better because I have more space and the light comes in and blah, blah, blah. Well, no, I, I, I actually, I didn't see that. That I, I didn't see that, but thank you very much. So I really, like I said, I really was very, very lucky. And I, I do think that it's important for us all to teach one another because each of our perspectives are completely different. So you, don't, you may not see what I see and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is such great advice. And I mean, amazing that you were able to work with people like that, who I'm sure you also helped them and helped teach them certain ways of styling and design and approaching something that they may have not seen before. And I love what you said about your style being a combination of France meets California, because I think that is such an apt description of the type of weddings and events that you create. Outside of the weddings and events industry, what inspires you? Where where do you seek inspiration? Is it art, fashion, design? So I, when I was a child, I used to want to be an interior designer. <laughs> After I ended my dance career, I even started to apply to different programs to go back to school for interior design. Long story short, that never happened, which is fine, but I get to live out my dreams and what I do now. But definitely interior design is a very, very big inspiration for me. That's incredible. And I think that really 
ties so well into weddings, into really creating a space that people feel comfortable in and people can celebrate in and that, you know, allows the couple to almost be the hosts for the night and create something that even though they're celebrating very likely in a different continent than they live, they're still hosting their nearest and dearest somewhere truly special that feels like them. Yes. And with that, so I know that you are lucky enough to work and live in one of the most spectacular luxury wedding destinations in the world. Obviously, we all saw that the Engage Summit recently took place in Paris, which was amazing. From getting married with a view of the Eiffel Tower in one of Paris's five-star palaces, palace hotels to celebrating with loved ones in an 18th central provincial villa, there are so many one-of-a-kind wedding destinations in France. So what do you think makes having a wedding in France so special? Well, I think you partly answered your own question. (laughs) (laughs) I really think that France is special because it's so varied. Each region is so vast and so varied and so unique with its own style, with its own uh, gastronomy, with its own wine. So, you know, if you're looking for something very iconic and maybe a little bit more modern and sexy and chic, I mean, Paris is your city, right? If you want something a little bit slower and and lavender fields and country with the you know smell of olives and the olive groves i mean you have provence but also if you want something a little bit like shabby chic and charming and off the beaten charts there's normandy so it kind of ticks every single box no matter what it is and i really 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 truly love that about france it never gets old it never gets boring it's always in style Oh, yes, I completely agree. So if you had a couple come to you, they know they want to get married in France, but other than that, they are completely open to the itinerary, to the location, flexible on budget. What would you recommend for a absolute dream destination wedding three or four day weekend in France? Oh, hands down, it would be Provence. (laughs) (laughs) Hands down, it would be Provence. Not only is it a region that is very accessible in terms of air, 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 uh, excuse me, flying. There's a major airport uh, in Marseille. There is also high speed train stations in Aix en Provence and Avignon. It's close to mountains. It's close to not that far from if you want to go to the beach on the Riviera. They have, uh, it's one of the major wine regions. So they have many different vineyards and wineries, olive, uh, olive oil tastings. If you want to relax and lay by the pool, if you want to have like a beautiful hike and go on a bike ride, it kind of like t- ticks all the boxes in terms of guest activities for a three to four day weekend. Amazing. So would you say day one could be a fabulous picnic? I would say day one could definitely be a fabulous picnic, a really nice olive oil tasting or visiting the 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 lavender fields. I would also say it would be nice to take a little I have a little market day and visit the markets of San Remi de Provence and do a little stop in one of the Provencal restaurants. That's a definite beautiful, beautiful option. Day two could be a rehearsal dinner at maybe not at the venue, but at a restaurant and has a wine tasting that's attached to it. The wedding day could be spent fully at the venue that has an on-site pool and you can do some swimming in the morning. The next day, brunch on site as well. It kind of is open to whatever you want it to be. Mm, Amazing. And I mean, I think the special thing is too that because of that, oftentimes couples will see their friends and family planning extended trips that go long 
before or after the wedding too. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's a completely unique, special, one of a kind aspect that having a destination wedding internationally brings together. I mean, when you are in France and you know that your friends are starting to fly in and you're watching people on their Instagram oh, as they land in Paris and they go have dinner the first night at Frenchie and they go on a fabulous boat ride down the Seine in one of the beautiful vintage restored speedboats. And there's just so much that can be added to it that almost yes. makes all of the day's events leading up to and after the wedding as special as the wedding itself. Oh, you're absolutely right. And I actually I actually encourage the guests of my clients to have a France experience vacation before the actual wedding weekend so that when the weekend comes, no one is jet lagged. Everyone can just relax, have fun, and just end everything on a high note. Oh, yes, please. I mean, that sounds absolutely amazing. So I know Provence is your favorite region of France for weddings. What are your favorite venues, either that you have worked at, that you want to work at? Are there a few that come to mind that you just absolutely love? I do have a few. In Provence, I love Chateau d'Estublon. It's mm -hmm. hands down the most beautiful wedding venue, venue, period, in all of Provence. The service is spectacular. They have a restaurant on site that's just out of this world. And it's just visually stunning. So I would definitely say Chateau d'Estublon. Chateau de Toro is another beautiful, beautiful venue that's located just outside of Avignon. It's actually where Sophie Turner and uh, Joe Jonas got married a few years ago. <laughs> yes, I think that was 2019. I think so too. Yes. yes. That venue, their service is top notch as well. And they have a lot of different areas on site on the property that can be used for different moments of the entire weekend. So that's fun too. When in Paris, I mean, hands down the Ritz, you can't go wrong with the Ritz. The services, Always. the like the top, 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 of the top creme de la creme. It's absolutely beautiful. The food is extraordinary. It comes with such an iconic history and it's just easy to access. Yes. And may I also add it photographs beautifully. And it photographs beautifully. You can't, you can't go wrong with the Ritz. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. So many incredible places to get married in France. And, you know, there really is something for everyone, depending on your personal style, depending on your budget, depending on your vision for what type of experience you want to provide your friends and family. Absolutely. absolutely. No, I absolutely agree with that. So I know that for you, Jen, pretty much every single one of your couples is planning a destination wedding and the majority of their guests are traveling internationally. So given that you are consistently working on global events, are there any trends, any movements, anything that you've seen in destination weddings that you're excited about? So I definitely see, especially since COVID, I should say Prior to COVID, it was it was very usual for clients to have maybe a one or two day event, the rehearsal dinner, and then the wedding day, right? But I feel like after COVID, the trend has become to just elongate that celebratory weekend to three or four days. I mean, I don't mean I, I'm not talking about having a blowout event on every single of the four days, but just like a really nice get together over the span of three or four days so that that way guests can really enjoy their time with each and every guest that has made the commitment to come over to France to spend with them. So I really, really enjoy that, that trend because it's just the whole importance of the wedding is the marrying of the family, of the friends, of the culture, of the customs, of everything, right? And it's at the heart of it. That's 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 why we have weddings. That's why we get married to to get married. So I really, I really, really am enjoying that. Yes, I, I love that. I completely agree. And actually, I can even speak from personal experience. When my husband and I got married, we had a 
four or five day wedding. So mm-hmm. really we had just small intimate events planned yes. every day leading up to it. And when you're having a wedding, oftentimes if you're trying to fit everything into one or maybe one day plus a you know small Too welcome much. party before, you can feel really overwhelmed that you aren't able to interact with a lot of your friends and family who, if you're having an international wedding, have invested a significant amount of time and finances coming to see you. And yes. having a multi-day event like that just takes so much of the pressure off. It allows yes. you to really have time to connect individually one-on-one with everybody that's coming in a very, very low key natural setting that just happens naturally because you have multiple days of these beautiful events. And I think from a experience perspective, both for the guests, but also for the couple, it just makes that wedding day so much more relaxed, so much more intentional. You're able to feel grounded because at that point, you are so happy. You are surrounded by the people that mean the most to you that almost it feels like the wedding day is just an icing on the cake because you've had so much beauty and so many connections and incredible memories that have already taken place that it takes just a little bit of that pressure off the wedding day, which I think in turn really allows couples to be so much more grounded and present and just, I think, grateful for everything as it's happening, which I think is so incredibly spectacular. And so with that, I know that a lot of wedding creatives who are listening to this, Jen, are probably wondering how they would ever have the opportunity to work with you, to work with someone like you, while everybody is at different places in their careers and different stages in their journey. Do you have any recommendations for wedding pros that might be listening on how to get on a planner's list? Yeah. So I am one of those people who really believes in organic friendships, organic partnerships, organic relationships. So I definitely would recommend to reach out to a planner, reach out to a photographer, reach out to any type of wedding professional that you feel would you would make a good partnership with. Maybe it's because of the style of weddings that you do or just based on personality or whatnot. But I would say really try to ease into a connecting process so that that way, if and when the relationship does happen, it happens organically and it's built on a foundation of just trust and happiness and and just not organically pushy. <laughs> yes. But definitely give it a try. And I would also say, if it doesn't happen, just move on to the next. And that's okay. That's okay. Absolutely. And I think there's something to be said about really meeting people where you're at and finding people that are in the same place that you are so that you can both encourage each other. You can both lift each other up through the years. I think, to be honest, that's exactly what we did, Jen. We both met when we were at very similar places in our career and just over the years have continued to grow and develop together so naturally. And I think that really creating those long-term relationships can be so mutually beneficial. I know we've talked a lot about it before, but just can you tell us a little bit more about your thoughts on specifically the planner photographer relationship and why it's so crucial? Yes. So I, I do believe that it's probably besides the catering Besides the catering, it's the most crucial relationship a planner can have with a creative team member. I really, really look to the photographer to lend their expertise and to lend their two cents in terms of their photography timeline, in terms of keeping everything on track on the day with the couple so nothing goes awry or really off off base in terms of timing to really get the shots, not only that the couple needs for their portrait, for, excuse me, for their, uh, collection. Yes. Gallery. Yeah. But also, but also that the planner needs for their portfolio because it's, it's, it's important. That relationship is just very, very important. I, 
really believe that each kind of going back to the the point that you made a little bit earlier that it's so important to really style and curate curate each and every moment of the couple's wedding whether it be whether it be photographing a shot of the food, photographing um, the flat lays of the stationery, photographing what have you, because not only is that important for the planner, but that's also important for the couple because at the end of the day, that's something, that's an element that they spent money on. So that's also that's also something that needs to be kept in mind. So it works both ways. Yes, I completely agree. And you're also, you're so right that they not only do spend money on those elements, but they also a lot of time put a significant amount of thought and intentionality into it. So they may choose their menu because they're thinking about it from almost a, we're hosting a dinner party. This is our dream dinner party menu. This is the first time that we are going to be entertaining as a husband and wife. And thinking about the paper goods, like you talked about, they might spend a very long time collaborating with their designer to create something that feels very true to them, to their story, to their vision of what their life is going to be. So of course, those photos matter so much. And Even on a wedding day, I think when you have that relationship, the planner photographer relationship, it allows the whole creative team to almost come together more as one team. You never want to go into a wedding where you have a photographer doing one thing, the planner's doing their own thing, florist is doing one thing. We really almost want to lose our identities at some point and become the creative team. And when we're all working together like that, out of a place of teamwork, out of a place of collaboration, mutual respect, trust, understanding, when inevitably something goes wrong, because yes, there's always something that goes wrong behind the scenes on a wedding day, every single wedding, most of the time, if done and handled properly, the couple and the guests will never even know. But when that goes wrong, when you have that relationship that you can just let down all pretenses and say, We have a little bit of a problem on our hands. How do we come together and create a quick, easy, painless, creative solution? That, to me, is where the magic happens. Exactly. And if I could add on to that, if that relationship is honed and the foundation is set from the beginning, the foundation of of trust and also of communication, then on the day... If something, God forbid, goes awry and we all need to come together, it's just, it's done. It's seamless. You know, the trust is there. The support is there. And we just head into it together and it's done. Exactly. Yes, I completely agree. I mean, I think we could honestly have an entirely separate episode (laughs) talking about just that because really there are so many nuances to it. But in the end... It's all about teamwork. It's all about preparation. I mean, you cannot put enough emphasis on how important taking that time to be prepared, to talk about the vision, to talk about the timeline so that if something happens, you have the ability to quickly mitigate it. And a lot of the problems that could happen automatically are averted just because we're able to put that time in the upfront, even though it's significantly more work on everybody's part to spend that time really digging into an entire wedding versus just coming and doing your job to the best of your ability. It makes such a better experience for everybody, both couple guests as well as vendors. So yes, I think Wherever you're at in your career, investing in those relationships, forming relationships of trust and respect and appreciation so that you have a team in place that you can really create magic with is something that you I, I you can't put a price tag on on how valuable it is. You're absolutely right. And not only that, but our clients hire us and especially us planners to be able to not only plan and execute and design a beautiful day, but also to be able to troubleshoot in advance so that 
they're none the wiser if anything should happen. And yeah, it may take a couple of extra hours, well, many extra hours. <laughs> Hundreds, 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 hundreds of extra hours. But you know, that's that's part of the service that we provide. And exactly. I mean, exactly. I for one am happy to do it because that doesn't exactly. not only does it benefit my couples, but it benefits myself and my creative team as well. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, what a, what fantastic, a fantastic opportunity this has been for our listeners to learn from you, Jen. It has been so much fun, and I cannot thank you enough for your time today. And I know that quite a few of our listeners probably already follow you for all things beautiful weddings in France. But for those who may have just met you, where can we follow and learn more about you? You can head over to my website at jenniferfoxweddings.com or you can find me on my Instagram at jenniferfoxweddings.com. Amazing. Jennifer, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story and for joining us here on The Wedding Destination. Oh, I had so much fun, Molly. Thank you. I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> <laughs>